Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name's Jason Tranter, and in this presentation we're going to look at I Teach Bearings. Now, I Teach Bearings can do an awful lot. There's so many things you can do with I Teach Bearings. It's there to teach all about uh, the non-synchronous frequencies you get, the way the bearings fail, the way you perform your analysis, all the way down to enveloping and uh, high frequency detection and all those sorts of things. <clears throat> so, to start with, what we can do, we'll flick this little switch. Now you might notice there's a whole lot of little switches there that you might think, boy, how does anyone know what those things do? Well, we actually have a settings tab here as well. You can see all the settings, but so that the screen doesn't look too cluttered, you know, once you get used to them, you can use all of these options without you know, looking at those, uh, all those settings options. But anyway, so in this mode, the, the shaft has stopped and we've put this green reference mark. Now, if I'm interested in vibration related to a fault on the outer race, I can slowly rotate the shaft here and we can see that uh, at, at this point, we just started from with one of the rollers touching and we scroll it, we scroll it, we scroll it and you see now I have one impact which we can see just there, <coughs> two, three, four, and if we complete the rotation, that green line needs to be horizontal, we've got four and a bit. And that's why the defect frequency for this bearing for the outer race fault is 4.22 times the running speed. And basically we can go through and look at a fault on the inner race. It's actually under that green dot there. Uh, so we just saw outer race. This is inner race. <clears throat> this is a fault on the ball, and this is a, a point on the cage itself. So, for example, if we do a fault on the ball, we can see that as we rotate the shaft, I'll just wind it back. Now, in this case, we can demonstrate the case where the fault uh, impacts just the inner race or just the outer race, or both. So we can see as we rotate the shaft, the rolling element or the ball or roller impacts here. <clears throat> impacts there and so on and so forth and we can just rotate the shaft and we can see that for all the frequencies um, just what those defect frequencies will be and they will always be non-synchronous you can even go through and enter different dimensions and we can go through a database and look at as many bearings as you like but unless they're thrust bearings with particular angles uh, they will always be non-synchronous and we've got another program dedicated to that which I won't talk about for now. Now what are all the things we can do? We can turn on the bearing again and kind of move slowly because I'm recording the screen but I can come through here and say let's make the fault a bit worse and a bit worse and a bit worse and sort of just look at how the vibration might change. Now of course this is all exaggerated you can see these faults but something I can do is say well what if we put it through a filtering process such that now we just get the defect. Um, you can still see the once per revolution vibration here, but now we see these defects. And in this case, <clears throat> you can see how the vibration is changing. There's a, there's a certain modulation. As that ball rolls around the bearing, uh, as we go into the load zone, those peaks are stronger, like the impacts are stronger as we go through the load zone, and out of the load zone, they're weaker. So <clears throat> I can for example, choose a different fault on the outer race and we'll see that each pulse is the same amplitude because the force of the impact is always the same. Whereas if I look at a fault on the inner race, then as it goes through the load zone, the impacts are stronger and then the impacts are weaker. And we can even sort of draw on here and see you know, that, that modulation effect. You can see it here. <coughs> you can see in this case the defect frequency is 6.7. Eight. Now, there are other things we can do. We can look at spectrum analysis and overall level readings as well. We can um, <clears throat> do all sorts of things demonstrating how the modulation process works, you know, the, um, the, the demod process. So we can oh, actually I need to turn that on. So in this case, we've filtered it. 
filtered away the low frequency so now we've only got the bearings then we um, <coughs> uh, rectify it so that the negative is all positive then we envelope it and there we go and if we do an FFT of just that that's what you see in in uh, uh, enveloped or demod spectrum that's where those techniques work <coughs> There really are a lot of things we can do with this simulator. You can see all of the options here. There's so many things we can do. But look, the idea of this little presentation is to give you an idea of the simulators. And uh, that was I teach bearings. So thank you very much for viewing this presentation. I hope you may have learned a little bit about uh, bearing analysis. But the main idea is to get a demonstration of I teach bearings. Thanks very much.